Well, hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Ian of Ian the Reader, that's me, and I'm here today with a book of the month prediction video, which I have not done in a good hot minute because life gets away from you sometimes, you know? Uh, but today, yes, I'm going to be jumping back into my predictions for the Book of the Month box. This is something that I've done a lot on this channel. I love Book of the Month. It's a really affordable book subscription box that features a lot of great new publications from a variety of genres, and they have a great backlist of books as well for you to pick from. I'll go ahead and leave a link down below for you to go ahead and get a discounted first month if you would like to try it. It does ship to the U.S. and Canada now, so that's great. Uh, but yeah, in this video, I'm just going to be talking about my predictions for the 10 books that I think have a possibility of being featured in Book of the Month. Now that's not to say that I will be at all correct because if you've watched these videos ever at all for any length of time, you'll know that I have a hit or miss track record, but this is just focusing on the books that I think have a really good possibility of being featured and I always like to see how many I get right, so we'll see. Before we jump into the video though, I would love to hear from you guys. What books are you hoping to see in the February Book of the Month box? And did you order a box in January? I didn't but I think there are some books that were featured in January that I might like to add as add-ons for future boxes. So I'd love to hear from you guys though, please let me know. So going into this year, I am gonna be doing things a little bit differently in these videos. In the past, what I would do is I would pick three books from each genre that are typically featured in Book of the Month and I would talk about those. But to be honest, one, there are a lot of those books that I didn't really know a lot about and I didn't really feel like I could pitch to you guys. And there's still gonna be some of those in this video, but holding myself to three of each one was a little bit more challenging. And on top of that, that was just a lot of books to talk about. And so rather than do that in the future, I'm going to be doing a more finely tuned list of books that I think or hope will be featured. And that's going to be 10 titles, not necessarily divided up into genre, just 10 specific books that I think have a good shot of being featured. And how I'm gonna be talking about them is an order of release date. So I will be going from the most soon to its release date to the latest release date, if that makes any sense. You know what I'm talking about. So that's the plan going forward, 10 books going in order of release date. There you have it. Let's go ahead and get started though. The first book I wanted to talk about is the only book on this list that is already out at the time of my filming. There is one other January release, but this is the only book that is already out. And that book is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I love Grady Hendrix's books a lot. They are so much fun. He writes like horror books, like kind of horror, like mystery, thriller, suspense kind of books, but you know, with horror elements. He's a really popular author. He has some really amazing books. I have read three so far, I think. I've read Final Girl Support Group, uh, My Best Friend's Exorcism, and The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. So if any of those titles or books sound familiar or interesting to you, you may wanna pick up How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. This sounds really fun and it's definitely a book that I want to read and I'm hoping to read. I have been holding off on picking up a copy just in case it does happen to be featured in February. Now he is quite the popular author and oftentimes they don't do early releases for super popular authors. So I could definitely see this being featured in February, even though it wasn't featured in January. So what this book is about is it follows two siblings whose parents have just died at the end of the coronavirus pandemic. And uh, essentially they are estranged from each other, but now they have to come together to sell their parents' house, which may or may not be haunted. So that sounds pretty fun. So far, this book has a 4.16 on Goodreads with over 1,500 ratings. And like I said, this book is already out. It came out on January 17th. It comes in at 419 pages, which is a little bit on the longer side, but not crazy long by any means. I could definitely see this being a late addition to Book of the Month selection. I would love it if this was a February pick. Moving on to book number two, we have a book that has actually already been sort of confirmed as a book of the month selection for February. If you haven't already seen the book of the month website and or app has a hint that has been posted for February and this book is very obviously going to be the pick. But the book that I'm talking about is Mame by Jessica George. And yes, that is how you say it because the description of how to say it, like the phonetical spelling is in the Goodreads description. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and talk about that. So this book is a contemporary fiction work revolving around a girl named Maddie, who is a young adult. She's the caretaker for her ailing father and her mother is often just out. She's visiting Ghana, going all over the place and she feels stuck in her life. She's the only black woman at her place of work. And so she feels very much isolated in that regard, as well as just the situations that she finds herself in in life have her feeling trapped. But one day she gets the opportunity to leave and blossom a bit for herself but it's not an easy road and things definitely get complicated from there. This book sounds really wonderful and moving and has been getting some really good reviews that I've seen on Instagram and Goodreads. It currently has a 4.30 on there with over a thousand ratings. 
And like I said, this book does come out at the end of the month. January 31st is the release date and the page count is 320. And as I said earlier, this book is almost guaranteed to be a book of the month selection just based on the hint that is available on book of the month's website. And I'm really excited about it. It sounds really good. And I hope that a lot of readers really resonate with it. The third book that I wanted to talk to you guys about today is a novel called Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes. So this is a book that is already released in the UK, but it is getting a US release, which I'm really excited about this one. It sounds awesome. We get a lot of like Greek mythology retellings from Book of the Month, so I could definitely see them going with this title. This is a retelling or fictionalization of the creature from Greek mythology, Medusa, who is, or Medusa, actually she's a Gorgon. She's a Gorgon. Her name is Medusa. My apologies. But essentially when people look at her, she's so terrifyingly ugly or something like that, that they turn to stone. And uh, it's about her and about her life and her backstory. And I'm super hyped about that. It sounds so good. We'll definitely be reading this. It currently has a 4.02 on Goodreads with over 4,000 ratings. The release date for this one was September 15th in the UK, but it comes out on February 7th here in the US and uh, it comes in at 384 pages. So definitely a good option for Book of the Month. I would love to see this feature and I will probably be ordering it if it is. Fourth up to bat, we have the only romance that I featured in this video, and that is Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. Now this is an author whose name I have seen a lot on Instagram and on Goodreads. She's quite the beloved uh, romance author. However, I believe this is the first book in a new series by her. So if you enjoy her books, you will definitely want to keep an eye out for this one. It says that it's a steamy new rom-com about a starchy professor and the bubbly neighbor he clashes with at every turn. So I guess that's like, what's that trope? Uh, is it like grump to lover or something like that? I don't know. Somebody's grumpy, somebody's cheery and the, they, they fall in love. So there you have it. If that's for you, I'm really excited for you. And I hope that it does get selected for you for book of the month. This comes in at 384 pages. The release date is February 7th. And uh, it currently has a 3.86 on Goodreads with 753 ratings. So that's pretty good. The fifth book that I wanted to discuss with you today is called Venco. And this sounds pretty good too. It is by Sherry Demoline. I don't know if I said her last name right, but I tried. It's from the fantasy genre. And this book follows a young protagonist named Lucky St. James. And she is having a hard time. Her cantankerous but loving grandmother Stella is barely hanging on when she realizes that she's going to be evicted from her apartment where she lives with her grandmother. And so she's struggling, she's desperate, and then she finds this spoon, I believe, with an engraving of a crooked nose witch and the word Salem on it, and it starts humming with energy. And all across the United States of America, or on the other side of the United States of America, a witch who has been hunting for her or this spoon realizes she's there and starts going after her. But then at the same time, a witch hunter comes into the picture as well. So there's witches and witch hunters and all that madness, but it's set in modern day America. I believe it's in like New York. I can't remember what it said, but it sounds really interesting. It's like kind of an urban fantasy, fantasy type of book. It's been getting some really good reviews. It currently has a 3.91 with 128 ratings. So not a ton of ratings, but I could definitely see this being picked by book of the month. It is 400 pages exactly, and it comes out on February 7th. This sounds like a really exciting title, and I'd love it if it was picked. The next book I wanted to talk about is called On the Savage Side by Tiffany McDaniel. If the name Tiffany McDaniel sounds familiar to you, that is because one of her previous books, Betty, was featured as an add-on for Book of the Month. It was never a specific like Book of the Month pick for that month, but it was a featured add-on. I ordered it, but I have not read it yet definitely want to, especially after seeing the reviews for her new book on the Savage side. So rather than the kind of contemporary or like literary fiction that she normally writes, this delves a little bit more into the mystery thriller side. You've got six women, mothers, daughters, sisters who have gone missing. When the first is found floating dead in the river, it reveals the disturbing truth of an, a small Ohio town. Inspired by the unsolved murders of the Chillicothe Six, this harrowing and haunting novel tells the story of two sisters, both of whom could be the next victims from the international bestselling author of Betty. So it is still kind of like on the literary side and that it's inspired by true events. It features this small Ohio town and kind of delves into that history as I have read in the synopsis and reviews, but it is very thrilling. It features this mystery and the serial killer. So it sounds awesome. And it currently has a 4.46 on Goodreads, which is an amazing score. It has 316 reviews, so not a ton yet, but people are loving it. It is a 464 page book, which is a bit long, but Betty was long as well. And they did have that as an add-on. So I could see it either being an add-on or a main pick. 
and it comes out on February 14th. I am super looking forward to On the Savage Side and I will definitely read it regardless of whether or not it is a book of the month selection. All right, next we have, I have some questions for you by Rebecca Mackay. So this is quite the popular and beloved author. Um, the author of The Great Believers, which got quite a bit of acclaim. This sounds really good. And it also is an author who um, normally writes like literary contemporary, who is now drifting a little bit more towards the mystery side of literature, which is always kind of cool. His short description on Goodreads says, a successful film professor and podcaster, Bodie Kane, is content to forget her past. The family tragedy that marred her adolescence, her four largely miserable years at New Hampshire boarding school, and the murder of her former roommate, Talia Keith, in the spring of their senior year. Though the circumstances surrounding Talia's death and the conviction of the school's athletic trainer, Omar Evans, are hotly debated online, Bodhi prefers needs to let sleeping dogs lie. But she cannot because new evidence comes out, I believe, that makes her start to question whether or not people thoroughly question other people or if they just took the easy suspect in this murder and all of that jazz. So we've got some falsely accused, possibly being drawn into question the evidence and all of that jazz. This sounds quite thrilling, quite mysterious, and uh, I am down to read it. It sounds really good. The current score for this book on Goodreads is 4.11, and it has 265 ratings. I really like the cover on this book as well. It comes in at 400 pages, and it comes out February 21st. I would love to read this book. I would love to see it featured. We'll see what happens. All right, only three more books to go. The next one is a very popular author, especially with Book of the Month. The first two books by this author were also featured on Book of the Month, I believe, main picks, so uh, I would love to see this book featured. The book that I'm talking about is The Angel Maker by Alex North. So I have read one book by Alex North, The Shadows. I have not read The Whisper Man. I think that's what it's called. Um, but this author is quite beloved. His books are thrilling and intense and kind of terrifying. It's more on like the horror side of thrillers. I would say, um, but it is kind of on the line between horror and thrillers. The short description for this one on Goodreads says, a dark, suspenseful new thriller about the mysteries of fate, the unbreakable bond of siblings, and a notorious serial killer who was said to know the future. Whoa, I like that. That sounds really good. Um, I would really love to read this. It looks like you've got kind of a detective point of view. So it's almost like a procedural type situation, but you have those sibling bonds in there and a serial killer, which is always an exciting addition to a book. Uh, yeah, I think this sounds great. It does currently have a 3.68 on Goodreads, which is not super good, uh, but you know, mystery thrillers can sometimes be pretty divisive. So I wouldn't necessarily take that as a reason for you not to read it if it does sound interesting to you. It currently has 457 ratings as well. So we'll definitely get more when it's released on February 28th and it comes in at 336 pages. I could definitely see this being featured because this author has been featured twice before, but we'll see. Next, we have the only straight up historical fiction book that I have chosen, but this is one that I could definitely see being featured for Book of the Month, and that is Time's Undoing by Cheryl A. Head. So this is a book that I hadn't heard about before doing my research for this, but it sounds really good. Here's the short description. A searing and tender novel about a young black journalist search for answers in the unsolved murder of her great grandfather in segregated Birmingham Alabama decades ago, inspired by the author's own family history. So we have two different settings, actually. It is in 1929 and 2019. So you have that historical fiction setting, but I was wrong earlier when I said that it like is straight up historical fiction. It's the only one that can be categorized as historical fiction, but there is still that mystery element to it, which again, I love it when you have other genres of fiction and then you add mystery in there. It just makes a book so much more compelling to me. And I definitely think that this is going to be a book you're not gonna wanna miss. It currently has a 4.24 on Goodreads. It only has 38 ratings, so it's a great time to hop on it if it is a book of the month pick. It does come out on February 28th. And because of the fact that this is a debut novel, I believe, I could definitely see this being featured because book of the month does love to feature add-ons or uh, main picks that are debut novels. And uh, this sounds right up my alley. It sounds right up the alley of a lot of uh, book of the month subscribers, I think. I could definitely see this book being a book of the month pick. And the last book that I am featuring in this video is the only book that I think could be featured in February, despite the fact that it comes out in March. It has an early March release date, it is a debut novel, so I could definitely see it being featured early. And it just gives me Book of the Month vibes. The book that I'm talking about is The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell. This sounds super good. I have an e arc of it, but I haven't started it yet. But here's the description. A killer is on the loose when someone turns up dead on the set of a hit TV baking competition in this darkly beguiling debut mystery that is perfect for fans of Lucy Foley, Nita Prose, and Anthony Horowitz, soon to be a limited series on Hulu already. That is crazy to me that this book just came out, or it hasn't even come out yet, 
and it's already been picked up by Hulu. So it definitely seems like it could be a book of the month subscription pick and it's going to be a popular book for sure. Uh, like I said, this book does not come out until March 7th, so it would be an early release for book of the month, but I could definitely see that happening. Uh, the current Goodreads score is a 3.78 with 340 ratings. I really like the cover on this one and I could just see like the book of the month logo in that corner. Uh, let me know if I'm crazy for that, but I could definitely see it. And uh, the page count for this is 288. So it is on the shorter side. It's less than 300 pages and book of the month does like to feature some shorter options as well as the longer options and like the mid-length ones. So I could definitely see this as a pick. I would love it if this was a pick, even though I have the ER. I really like the cover and I'd love to see it on my bookshelf. I would. But thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed. Please let me know down in the comments which of these books sound exciting to you and which ones that you think could be a book of the month pick for February. For me, I would really, really like to see the Grady Hendrix book. I would also really love to see maybe Coven. Uh, really, a lot of these I think would be really great book of the month picks. The Golden Spoon, I mean, there's a lot of options. And obviously there are so many more books that could be featured in Book of the Month. These are just the 10 that really stuck out to me as possibilities. So thank you again so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.